Hello, my pretty awkward family. Welcome back to our Friday heart to heart. I hope you are having a beautiful week. If you're listening to this on a Friday or whatever day it is, I hope that you have had a good uh, 24 hours, a good last seven days. And if you haven't, I'm sending you all the love. Um, and I hope you take the time you need to just give yourself grace, give yourself healing. Um, I'm he- hearing a lot of, um, hot girl healing season and all of that. And I love it. I'm, I'm all for this. So whatever you need right now, but I am wanting to just share what's going on in my life as usual with these heart to hearts, but something in particular that I want to talk about today, it's kind of like a build off of uh, the last few episodes, last few heart to hearts is like just things that I've realized I've gotten away from because I defined them differently or I guess I should say things that I stopped doing in my business or things that I, I changed in my business because I thought that was the bottleneck or that was the, um, friction pain point, whatever you will, that was the, the, uh, bent in the hose, you know, whatever analogy you want to use. I thought that was the wrong thing. That was the thing that was stopping us from making more money, having more work-life harmony, Um, my husband and I being able to have our time and space together, right? And some of the things that I stopped doing were essential and were very correct. And some of the things that I altered or stopped doing were just unnecessary because that wasn't the reason for the results that I was like, oh, I don't like this. I don't like how much I'm working. I don't like how tired I am. I don't like this or whatever it is. And, you know, sometimes you just got to experiment and you got to try. I was talking to my dad about this last night. We went to dinner. He took me out to one of our favorite Mexican restaurants in Vegas. And we were talking and he's my accountant. He's my CPA. So he sees all my, all my stuff. And we were just talking about the last few years and we were talking about 2021 and how it was such an experiment. We're going to say experiment of year because I had one launch that basically like it looked really amazing on the outside, but because we spent so much on it, the profit was really low. And he's like, Oh, Luna wants to say hi. And he's like, so what happened? I remember him talking to me at that time. And I'm like, you know what, dad, sometimes we try things and we experiment in, in business in general, and sometimes they're slam dunk. And then sometimes we make unnecessary changes or we think we need more than we do. And we don't trust our gut. We don't trust our intuition. Um, or we think we need more bells and whistles. And sometimes that those bells and whistles will help you. Right. And sometimes it won't, and you don't really know until you try. And if, as long as you're in a safe position to try, which we were, then I'd say try. Right. And so I don't regret any of that because I learn so much by taking some of these risks, by investing in certain things and going, okay, I can see the value of it. And some of it was really great. And some of it just wasn't necessary for, for where I was at. And, and I don't know if ever necessary. So one of the biggest things that I have come to terms with though, as I am ramping up to launch a program in April is how much I pulled away from launching last year in the traditional way that I used to. So just to kind of rewind, if you're new to my world, um, first of all, hi, hello. I'm so happy to have you here. These heart to hearts are really just like update on life and what's going on. I'm going to share a little bit more about that after I share this little blurb, but one thing that I've been doing, gosh, since, since honestly my days in beach body and I stopped like actively working that in 2017, um, well, 2017, a little bit into 2018, I guess. So I guess we'll say 2018 was like a full, 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 full stop. And at that time, and it was really 2017. I'm trying to think that 2018 was when a full stop on fitness coaching. So 2017 was when I fully stopped putting energy into my beach body business. I had built it up as a network marketing business very successfully to the point where I still to that, to this day, make residual income from it every single month, which I'm very, very grateful for. We work, we worked hard for that. Um, but that's the beauty of, of residual income, right? It's, it's pretty amazing. And so at the time I, um, right when I, when I stopped doing that, I st- were near the end of, of that journey. I started to do launching. I started to actually launch my beach body challenges. And if you're not familiar with the company, basically, and I, they might've changed a lot today because I'm not up to date, but at the time it was like, you would do these 30 day challenges every single month, pretty much. And you would promote it. You would talk about it. And so I had started to like pay attention to my audience, what other people were doing outside of network marketing. And also just like my knowledge of the customer journey and have been in the company for so long and knowing my ideal clients so well. And so I started to do these launches. I started to like 
host these free challenges and warm people up and actually like give them time and not just like throw a bunch of promo posts and be like, Hey, join my challenge. And I started to see it. it, The first challenge, I got no conversions because I didn't promote (laughs) at the end. So that was a big mistake. Um, but then as I started to like tweak and learn, I started to see things actually come to life and people started signing up and it was really exciting. And then in 2019 or sorry, 2018, I started to do it for my own business outside of that. And I started to see real numbers. Like I had 17 or no, I think it was seven, not 17, 7,000 for my first um, group program outside of that company, which was like a health and wellness program um, with some, some live coaching. I think it was like every other week, live coaching for, I think it was three months. And I was so excited because it was my own program. I totally created it from scratch. I warmed up. I did the research. I, my audience came to a webinar and they, they joined and it was so exciting. I had also done a very similar challenge for my one-on-one coaching and I signed five high ticket clients from it. So I was like, there is a method to this madness. Like what I'm doing is working. And so then in 2019, after doing like, gosh, six or so of these kinds of launches, I launched a course, which was called how to run a bomb ass free challenge. That was literally the name of it. And I think that was in, yeah, I think, was that in 2019 or did I launch that in 2018? No, I think I launched that in 2019 after having done so many for the last few years. And I freaking loved it. I loved that style. I loved like taking my audience on a journey, giving them so much free gold, giving them so much value, educating them, like really helping them make such an educated decision on if my program was right for them or not. And I really loved launching. I loved it. I, I really enjoyed it. Now, of course, was I tired after? Yeah, of course you're exerting a lot of energy, but what I found was with this method, I was warming my audience up. Usually I did about like two to three weeks of content, warming them up before I then promoted my challenge, which I always promoted my challenge for at least two weeks. So it was about a month or so of like warming up before I actually said, Hey, you can go buy open cart. And I really, I just felt like during this time, I felt so of service to my audience. A couple of reasons. I loved it. I felt so of service. I felt like I was really showing my expertise and I just liked that my content plan was planned. Like when I was launching, I knew what I was posting. It was great. I didn't, I wanted to share content anyway, you know, most days and this did all the planning for me. And I am a planner. I love planning ahead. I'm, I like being strategic in that way. And I really loved it. But what I started to find as 2019 came around and then 2020, and then my hope, my story with my husband and I separating, getting back together, realizing I need to change a lot of my business. I cut a lot of programs, which that was needed. But then I started to think, oh, I also need to stop launching as much because launching is exhausting and launching takes a lot of energy and all of that. And sure. Am I tired after launches? Like I just said, yeah, I don't know anyone who's not because you're exerting a lot of energy, but when on the other side, you get to actually rest it's, I prefer it. And what I realized was, this is where I was saying in the beginning, where sometimes we're, we're think we found the problem or we think we found the, uh, the hole, right. And act and we thought we filled the hole, but actually that wasn't the right hole to fill. What really was happening was it wasn't launching. It wasn't that it was the after, it was the way I was structuring the programs that I had that people were launching into. The work after was so exhausting, whether it was because of the type of client and the amount of energy I was putting in or the structure of the offer or how many calls they required. It was a lot of live coaching. Even when I got rid of those masterminds, still a lot of stuff was like that. And so when I actually like stepped back last year and I barely did any launches, the ones I did, I I really enjoyed and I had a lot of fun. Um, but even then I was like, why am I still kind of (laughs) tired? Why am I still kind of tired? I'm like barely working. Like I was, I really worked so much less last year, which is just wild because we made so much more profit last year, which is just pretty incredible and shows you that it's not just about the amount of hours you work. It's working smarter, not harder, truly. And I realized I was missing that element of launching because not because of And and I'm not going to say not because of it. Who doesn't love a cash infusion? I love a cash infusion, obviously. But that wasn't, I knew I could make money anytime. I've proved that to myself. Last year was a big proving like, hey, you can actually make money anytime without doing so many structured launches. And I did, we had a great year. So it's like, okay, I proved that. But I felt like something was missing. And I realized upon a lot of this reflection, I realized that 
I love, I missed all those aspects. I missed really showing up so fully for my audience. Like I'm on it. I am on another level when I'm in that like warm up period. Um, I, I really love that. It plans my content. It, it's so clarity producing. I don't have to think like, I, I, I mean, I think, and I, but I also, I find that during that time, because it plans my content, I get so creative. Like those, I think back like to some of my amazing launches, I had like really clever singing videos, which I'm bringing back. I already have a really good idea for one that I'm going to put out in the next couple of weeks. Super excited. Um, it came to me while I was listening to music. So listen to music if, if you're going that route. But I, I used to have like these really clever content pieces. And it's because the actual like message that I needed to get across was already planned out for me. I already knew exactly what I was going to do. And so it allowed, it's like that whole structure and freedom phrase that you've probably heard. It allowed the structure, knowing what I needed to say each day, allowed the freedom to come in for the creativity. And I didn't have a lot of that last year. I was kind of just like, what are we feeling? Let's do that today. And I, I needed to go through that and I needed to go, I needed to go through that, but I realized this whole coming back home theme that I've been talking about a lot lately is that was something that I was so good at. I was so good at it that I had a whole mini course on it. I want to shouldn't even say mini course. It was a very, very involved thing. Now it's part of a bigger course, but it, I, I had a whole course on it. I taught it. My clients have had a lot of success with it and I really enjoyed the process. It was the after. And so when I really stepped back and analyzed, I was like, I miss that. I miss, again, I miss that service. I miss knowing exactly what I'm doing and having that clarity and having like a real direction for my content, direction for my audience, clear like thread, right? Like we all know where we're going. We're all getting in the same car and going to the same destination. And it's, it's fun. It's just a really fun time. If you love the offer, if you don't love the offer and you're on the other side of it, you're like dreading the service part you're not going to want to launch. And that's what I find a lot of the times, a lot of the times when I have clients who are very, very averse to launching, it's not necessarily the launching the uh, the actual aspect of putting yourself out there and selling and actively saying, Hey, something's open. Hey, something's closed. It's more so that the program that they're selling, they're like, not super jazzed about, right? And there's so many ways to launch. Like you could do a really chill launch just with your warm audience. You could use ads and find new people. You could do a really robust email system with your launch, email marketing with your launch. You could just do social media. Like there's so many ways you could do a whole secret launch behind the scenes. There's so many ways. And honestly, I know a lot of people say like, um, I'm not launching unless you have things literally in the background, evergreen selling, which we did have a lot of last year. If you're actively saying something is open and something is closed, you might not be putting as much energy or publicity to it. You're still launching. Launching is open and closed, right? So if you're doing anything open and closed, that's that's launch technically. Um, it's just more so are you putting doing it front facing or behind the scenes, right? And so that was something that when I analyzed this year and I was looking at it and I joined this amazing mastermind and we were going over our launch plans and I was like, well, I'll probably just let, you know, I don't know, maybe I'll just launch once or maybe twice this year. And she was like, you used to like launch a lot. It's like, yeah, I did. I, I definitely did too much. And we, we agreed on that. <laughs> I definitely launched like every other month. It was like a big to do. I don't know how I survived because then on the other side, I was also serving so many clients in a one-on-one -on -one capacity. I'm like, how did I do it? Oh yeah. My marriage was going down the tubes. That's how I did it. Okay. I had nothing. I wasn't doing anything but work. So that, that's why. So obviously I wouldn't go back to that, but I missed having that clarity. And so when we were sitting down and planning, I was like, I'm getting back to that this year. Like I'm so I can't tell you how, and I'm sure you can hear right now. And I'm going to read a message that I got from, um, an amazing follower, someone who's come to a lot of my stuff and I just really respect them. Um, but I have, I just feel this renewed sense of clarity and purpose and service to you and to my audience. And I'm really excited. And I think one of the reasons is because I know where I'm going and I know the changes that I make into the program so that when I'm selling this next program that I'm going to be selling in April, I'm so excited for the service because I know clearly what journey they're going on. I know it's going to be a slam dunk. I know it's going to be so incredible for the client. Like when you are so incredibly confident, confident about your offer, 
you usually want to launch it, whether it's a big to do or a small to do, doesn't matter. Again, that word can be very intimidating. It does not have to look one way. Maybe you see someone go above and beyond. And you're like, oh my God, that sounds exhausting. I can't do that. You don't need to. Like there's so many ways to do it, but it, you want to talk about it. You want to sell it. You're like, oh my God, this is such a good program. I have to talk about this. I have to figure out the marketing and the messaging and the right plan to, so that my audience can get it. And they're like, I get it. I hear what you're, I, I pick it up, what you're putting down. I'm in, right? I love that. And I, I have so, I get so excited with that. And it's something that I'm really renewed in this year, but I had to go through that whole cycle of like, it's launching. Launching is the bad thing. I have to stop doing that. It's exhausting. It wasn't. Now I was doing it too frequently. Yes. Like literally every month, every other month for two years, it was like nonstop. And some people are great with that because they can do these like more lower energy launches, right? They can kind of throw something up. And I'm super jealous of those people. Um, I was actually at to lunch with a friend, a, a new friend in Vegas, shout out Ruthie. And she is one of those people who like, she can just like, something comes out of her mind. She throws it up and she can launch it, and it the next day. Like that's how she works. And I have a couple clients who are the same way. And it's really amazing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I and this is the the biggest point I actually wanted to make today is I was trying to do that. I was trying to be someone I'm not. I was trying to be this like, oh, it just pops in my head. And next week the sales page is done. The whole program's created all of that because I, I, I have a lot of friends who are like that. I have a lot of friends who are very flowy and a lot of friends who are, you know, in very spiritual and, and I am very spiritual too, but that's the thing. You can be both. I'm very spiritual. And I happen to also be very strategic and be very planned and like having a plan and like knowing what I'm doing every day and like time blocking. Like I love that shit. And I was trying to pretend I didn't, I was like, no, I'm so go with the flow. I'm very go with the flow in many ways. I've become very unattached to the outcome. I'm very proud of all of that. But when it comes to like my operations every day, I operate like that. I operate planned. I operate structured. And I was like forcing myself to be someone I wasn't. I was forcing myself to be more like my friends who have had so much success and seem to be like, so not stressed. And I was like, that must be the key. I got to launch less or I, or I have to launch more, but less like involved. Right. I'm not going to do this warm up. I'm not going to do this challenge. I'm not going to do any of that because that's just too much. I don't need to do that. Right. Too much, too much for who? right? Who, too much for who? It wasn't too much for me. It, the amount I was doing it was too much because of the intensity at which I did it, right? And after taking many Enneagram, you know, well, not many of taking it and taking human design, many personality tests, I should say, I've come to accept and honestly relish in the fact that I am someone who likes to kind of make a show of it. I like to have a big warm up. I like to have a big process. I like to be nitty gritty. I like to um, go all in and do all the things. That's not surprising. And it's funny. I was talking to my mom about this and how I like had this realization. And she doesn't really, she understands what launching is, but she's not on social media. Thank God. I'm so happy about that. Um, but she like understands the concept. And she's like, honey, of course that's how you are. Like, look how you grew up. <laughs> like I grew up, in a theater family, a, a musical theater family, I had every activity under the sun. I had to be super structured. And I was the same way in college. I worked hard to play hard, my friend. I partied like it was my job. And I also ended up being number one in my class. So I, that was always how I operated. Like I will have a good time, but I will get my work done first and I will get it done to the nth degree. I will overstudy. I will overprepare. And that's just who I am. And I think and, and it's a good quality in many ways. Now, of course it can go the other end. And I have worked so much on that. I've taken programs to help with that. Shout out positive intelligence, all about saboteurs. Um, and I really worked a lot on that. And so I feel like I've found, like all of the last few years has like gotten me to this place where I'm like, I can recognize that those are my gifts and my strengths. And I should lean into those and not escape them because I don't have to fear them going over the other side where it's too much anymore because I know what's my priority. It's my husband, it's my family and, and that's it. That's the priority. And I, that is so front and center that I have no fear now of going back. And there's this one moment that hit me like a ton of bricks. And I think I might've shared it in a, in a podcast in the last few years. I'm not sure, or last few years, in the last few months, but I was reading the big leap by Gay Hendricks for the, for the first time. I read it two times, highly recommend it. And 
after the first chapter was a little bit tough for me to get into. I was like, oh, this feels like very old school personal development It just didn't, it, it just wasn't my jam. Right. And then it started to pick up and I was like, oh shit, I feel very seen and called out right now. And I realized one of my upper limits, as he calls it, was I thought that I can't make really great, the great money I want to, because that means that my marriage will, will suffer because I bought into the belief that the more money I made, the worse my marriage got. And when I was reading this book, my marriage was, and is really strong and it's just getting stronger every day. And it's because like we work on it every day. Now we are, it was completely different marriage. It's it's basically like we come, we became two different people in a sense. Like we became more of who we are really. Um, but it's a completely different relationship. And so I had to realize like, no, you don't need to hold yourself back anymore. And I realized I was subconsciously and I think a little consciously, but subconsciously doing that in my actions. And I was holding myself back because I was so scared that I, I can't sacrifice that. I like, that's number one. I would rather my business be total. I totally put it under the ground say it's done. We're closed for business and go get a nine to five job. than have my marriage crumble. Like it's just not a, it's not a choice for me. And so, oh God, I'm like literally getting emotional thinking about this right now, because when I realized that I was like, damn, damn, that is how you've been operating for two years. <laughs> that is how you've been operating for two years. And you don't need to do that anymore, Meg. You don't need to do that anymore. You get to put that to the side because you guys are strong and you're always going to put each other first and you can make really incredible, incredible money. You can build really great wealth for your family and your future and all the things that you want to do and give back to and all the experiences you want to have and the legacy you want to leave. Like you can have both. And it was just like such a hit. And it started this big realization and self-discovery of who really am I? And a huge part of who I am is that version that I was when my husband and I weren't doing great, but the good parts of it, right? Like the strategy and the, the structure and the purpose and the timelines and all that shit. I love that. And I was trying to be someone I wasn't. And it's, it, you kind of have to sometimes go, I've talked, I've been talking a lot about that lately, like the pendulum swing, you kind of have to go to like totally to the other side in order to swing back. Right. And I feel like I kind of totally went to like, let's just feel into it. Let's just see what I feel this month. Let's just see what happens. And if, if something, you know, if I feel motivated, great. Um, and I did that and you know what, we did pretty good for, for that. We did pretty dang good financially for, for that. But I, just felt like something was off. I always felt a little stressed and it wasn't until like halfway through the year, maybe more so like quarter four, where I got this immense, I've talked about this immense peace feeling. Cause I was like, I know we're coming back. We're coming back to that. And the other day I got this message from someone and she's so, so sweet. She said, I just wanted to tell you, she replied to a story of mine. Um, I want to, I just wanted to tell you that I have literally felt, she put felt in, in all caps, the shift in you. I know we have never worked together, but I have followed for a long time and watching you come back home has been magnetic. And she put magnetic in all caps with the magnet um, emoji. <laughs> she said, keep going. I am sure your launch with your coaching offers has shown that too. I was like, oh my gosh, I so appreciate you saying that because it's, it's gonna, one thing I told her, I said like, you know, it's really scary sharing this vulnerably and honestly, because a lot of people who've had success in their industry. And maybe, and I'm going to say this, it sounds weird saying this, but I'm going to claim it and own it. I feel like I am a leader in this industry. I feel like I've been a leader in this industry for many years. And I feel like I'm a really good leader in this industry. And I'm going to own that. I'm trying to own my strengths and own what I'm good at and not apologize for them. It's not bragging. It's, I think it's true. I know it's true. And sometimes when you are, you're seen as a leader, you're someone who's had a lot of public success. And I say public in our little bubble, right? I'm not famous, <laughs> but in our little bubble, like when you have, have this position, sometimes you want to just like always be looked at in this way. And it's like, I have to always put this persona up. I'm successful. I'm successful. I'm successful. There's never a dip. There's never a struggle. Right. And I have taken on the, I'm going to share share the journey. And I share, you know, like I always say, I share from the wound, not the scar. No, damn it. I always get that wrong. I share from the scar, not the wound every time, every time I get it wrong. Um, and so all of that, right. But I like to share and I like to share the truth and the ups and downs and all that. And I know in doing that, 
sometimes it's going to make me not look like I am that leader or I am that picture perfect. And someone might be more appealed to that. they might be like, well, this person has their shit together all the time. So I'm going to hire them. But the truth is they don't. No one does. Trust me. No, a lot of people in this industry, very personally, and we all got our shit because we're human. No one in the world, not one single human in this world has all their shit together. I can promise you that signed, sealed and delivered. And they're just choosing not to. And I get it because taking this choice, being like, I'll be the one, I'll be the one to, to, to do it. It's not easy all the time, you know, and I reserve the right. I always say this to change my mind, to not share things, of course, but like I've, I've, but that's me. That's who I am. And I, I know it's a huge part of me. It's a huge part of my brand. It's what the pretty awkward brand was literally built upon. And so I just want you to remember that too, is that you, every single person is going through shit. Every single person is struggling. Every single person, even if they're having the best month in their business, the best year in their business and things look hunky dory and amazing, they probably have a, something happening too. That's not perfect. Right. Because we're all human. And so I don't, this, this has been a tangent on a tangent on a tangent, but you know how we do on these Friday episodes, but that's something that I, I realized like when she sent that, I was so grateful because that was something that I was honestly really nervous about. And I'm like, man, is my, like, skill set and experience, all this not as valued anymore because I'm sharing the tough times because I'm like, Hey, shit's been hard. And I know that's not true, but you know, it, it's probably true for some people. And there's definitely some people who won't hire me because of that. And good, because we're probably not a good fit, you know? And that's the thing. You're not going to attract your people. If you're vanilla, you're not going to attract your people. If you were trying to appease everyone, the way I show up is going to massively connect with, with my community. I know it. You're listening right now because you connect with that and it's going to really turn off some other people. And that's okay. Like if I am trying to appease every single person and water down my message, I'm never going to reach anyone. I'm never going to reach anyone, right? We can't operate that way where, oh my gosh, if I say anything, it's going to offend someone. Someone's not going to agree with me. Of course, someone's not going to agree with you. Good. We should have healthy conversations. We should have healthy debates. That's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. And so uh, I just was so grateful for that. And she summed it up. And I was like, that inspired this whole episode. I was like, I can't thank you enough for sharing that because I feel it too. I really do. And I think my audience feels it. And my friend, I'm here to tell you, like, you can have this moment. You can have this coming home. You can have this comeback, whatever you want to call it. Like you can have it anytime. But I will say a couple of things that have really, really helped me during this time is giving myself space, like actual space, like January and, and December, I would say all of December, honestly, November, December, and January, <laughs> pretty much all, the last three months have been very low key for me. Now I've done some things like I did a, work, a workshop and I, I closed some spots in my mastermind. Like I did, I was doing things. I was still working, definitely working, but it wasn't, I had a lot of space. I had a lot of space and I did that intentionally because I needed that space to get this clarity back to go, what do I actually want to do? And it's kind of funny because initially I was like, well, I know where I want my business to go. I have the big vision. And I thought that's going to happen this year. And I realized when I stepped back and again, when I was in this, joined this mastermind, talked to my mentors, my mentorship is so freaking helpful. I realized that the vision I have that my husband and I have with the business and the brand and everything we want to do, it's, it's not going to happen this year. And I don't mean that in a negative, like, oh, it's not going to happen. I mean it in like, I, I truly in my gut know it's, it's got to naturally build up and it's got to take time. And I was trying to rush it. I was trying to rush. It. I was like, oh, I know where I want to go. I got to get there now. <laughs> Let's go now. You know? And I know that I needed to come home, come back to some foundational things that I love that I'm really great at that a bring in really good streams of revenue and that are of such service to my people. And then naturally, as we're doing that simultaneously, that will start to, um, that will start the other stuff, the vision that we have on the, the speaking and having big events and all this stuff that will start to come to fruition. I see that more as a 2024, 2025 thing. And I see that because the reason is I see it as a really big thing. 
I see it as really big and I do not want to rush it. I don't want to just like try to launch something and be like, okay, we have an event. Okay. We have this membership. Okay. We have this thing. And I know a couple episodes ago, I was like, this is the plan. And you know, they still might happen this year, probably at the end of the year, if they do, but I just realized I was trying to rush a lot of that stuff. And I wouldn't have realized that if I didn't give myself that space. So if you can afford to, give yourself some space. You don't need a ton of space. You don't need three full months. You don't need all that time. Right. Again, I was very lucky that I've been in this position where I can, the way I've set up my business, the money we have coming in, like the clients we have, like all of that. If you can't do that, I get it, but give yourself some space. Maybe that's like the weekend and you go to a hotel for a weekend, by the way, staycations, are the best thing for clarity. I get the best work done when I have a staycation. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, give yourself some space if you can, even if it's an hour, even if it's a day, it's going to really, really help you. Um, this is kind of unrelated, but it just popped in my head. I was like, I knew there was something else I wanted to share with you guys, um, is TikTok. So some fun, exciting things that we're doing over there. So one, my, one of my really good friends, um, I hired to basically be like a marketing um, a brainstormer, if you will, we're creating our own title for it, but marketing brainstormer. Um, and together we're creating, um, my TikTok content plan because I really want to grow on that platform. I've wanted to for a while. And I really, I love that platform. I'm having a lot of fun there and I know there's so much potential. And so we're kind of working on a couple different strategies of like mixing trends and, uh, B-roll with some really, um, hard hitting text over it that are, that fits my ideal client as well as face to camera rants. And those seem to be the best for me. That seems to be when people pay attention. Those are the videos that get the most views, the most comments, the most saves, the most shares. So I will probably be doing more of those. And that's great because I can repurpose those pretty easily to Instagram, but we're experimenting on that. And I initially was like trying to make my page a little bit more personal brand and kind of like, I, I am me and I am a singer and I am a wife and I am a business owner and I'm all these things. And I was like trying to share a little bit of everything. And I know a lot of people who take that angle and I love it. I think it's awesome. And it can be very, very successful. But what I realized was like, I have such a, I have such a strong story with my husband. Like we have such a strong story and we have so much to say about it. We have so much to say about it. And I started to feel a little like stuck because I was like, man, every single video I'm trying to tie in marriage and business because I want to talk about the relation. But at the end of the day, if I want to use this app to drive traffic to my offers, to, you know, bring in more leads and nurture more people and form more relationships, which is a huge reason I'm on there. I, it has to be business related because I, that those are my offers. That's how people can work with me as of now. That's what I offer. Right. And I just felt like I was like, what am I doing here? And so after a lot of talk and after a lot of experimentation and seeing some things hit and realizing a lot of the things that hit are just the business and me being really blunt and honest and my true Megan self, my pretty awkward self being like, this is how I think this is how it is. Let's call it out. Those do really well. And then the videos that are just about my marriage do really well. And I'm not surprised. And so exciting news. <laughs> Because <laughs> why don't we add something else to the plate? No, but we're really excited about this. Um, we are going to be starting a separate TikTok, my husband and I, and it's going to be purely about our separation journey and our coming back together and our how we're continuing to work on our marriage and the work we do with our coaches and all of that. I have countless, I have like probably a year's worth of content I could do right now because of how many questions I've gotten, how many just things when you're in it, we're still in it. That's the thing. Like when you're, we're always going to be in it because we're married and you're always gonna be working on your marriage. So it's like, we have so much to say about it because we're so in it. And so I feel this making this decision, we haven't created it yet. We have to figure out a name, um, but we are, we're probably going to start it after I get back from a retreat in a few weeks. So we'll probably start it like the end of Feb early, maybe kick it off first week of March. Um, but that I will link it back to my business, TikTok and my Instagram and things like that. Like, it's not like business will never be mentioned. Like it's part of our marriage. It's part of our story. Money was a huge part of our story. We're going to share a lot of details on that. We're going to get really honest about certain things that we haven't. Um, we'll definitely do podcast episodes about that too. Um, 
And we want it to be of service because we've gotten so many questions about that. And I just, again, felt like if someone is going, if the purpose of the other TikTok was to drive traffic to my offers, if someone's coming for the marriage content and then they look and they're like, oh, she's just basically business. I'm confused. I still want to serve that person because eventually our big vision, again, 2024, 2025, is we want to do events for couples. We want to have our coaches come in and facilitate that. Like we we definitely, we're not going to be marriage coaches. I never see myself doing that. I get that question a lot. I don't ever, never say never, right? But I don't really see myself like coaching people on that. It's more so sharing our story as a vehicle to help people and point and sharing resources that they could, they could have and doing events and facilitating that with experts on those things. Right. Uh, we're not experts on it. We've just lived it. We've have our lived experience. Right. But I, I felt so restricted. And now it's funny, even though it's going to be like more content, technically, I know it's going to save me so much time because again, I could literally create, I bet you I could create 10 videos in two hours right now and be good for the week for two weeks. Like I, I have so many ideas and we're going to start with like the goal is to probably do one video a day, maybe five a week to start out again. There's no, like the end goal for this. There's no really end goal. It's more so to build the brand and build us, us together and talk to people about that and serve, um, which feels really good because a lot of times when your end goal is like money, clients, leads, blah, blah, blah. There's this like underlying pressure. Like it has to go a certain way. And, I know just from being a a very avid TikTok consumer, I love that app. It's my favorite app. Like I know that when something is so from the heart and genuine, that's when it does the best. That's when the videos take off. That's when things like really skyrocket. And then that's when brands end up naturally starting. And so that's why we're doing it. And I feel already so free. I'm like, oh, I could just like go all in on that there. And Mike's down. He's ready to do it. He likes those speaking videos. He's like, just ask me questions. I'm good. Like, I just want to come up with the content. <laughs> I was like, don't worry. I will do that. I have so much. You guys have given me so much. So um, if you are in a, mar- in a relationship, whether you're married or in a significant relationship um, and you have questions just about our separation, about our marriage, about anything, um, shoot them to me, DM me on Instagram and we will, it'll really, really help us create some more content for that TikTok. Um, and then on the other TikTok, we're going to really double down on education and on diving into business, especially people in their first few years, as that's the program that we're launching in a few weeks, um, and really share my pillars, what I stand for, what I stand against my beliefs in business, my experience, um, mixed in with some really great educational pieces, like tactical things. Like I just shared something the other day, like a really good messaging tweak to, um, help you increase, uh, your conversions, uh, in your marketing. And, and it got a lot of saves. I was like, okay, people want this. This was really, really good. And it's so such a simple little tweak. And so there's going to be a lot of real juice over there. Um, and I'm going to keep you posted because I have a lot of people in my audience who are very curious about TikTok. They're either already on it and crushing it, or they're like dabbling or they're like dipping their toe, or they're just like on the sidelines watching, right? They're like, "Mm, not ready to dive in yet but I'm very interested. So I'm going to keep you posted. I will let you know how it goes. Of course, as we get the other TikTok handle, I will drop that in the show notes, but we don't have it yet. So I can't drop it yet um, when that comes. Um, And I'm sure I'll link to it in one of my pin videos in my other TikTok, which is just Megan Yelaney at Megan Yelaney, same as Instagram. Um, But I'm really excited about that. So this was kind of a all over the place episode, but in conclusion, the biggest things I want you to walk away with is like when you're analyzing your business, whether you're just starting and you're picking a method or you're picking a strategy or you're picking like a direction to go in, whether you're just starting or you are seasoned, um, is to really look at like, if you're just starting, what avenue do I want to go down? Like what path do I want to take? What strategies do I want to implement? Right. There's so many to choose from, um, And, or if you are an established and you're like, what do I need to change? What are your strengths? Like what, when you were a kid, what did people like say you were naturally great at? What were your natural instincts? What were some habits that you had? What are things you did? Right. And when I look back again, especially in high school, especially in college, I was really good at time management. I was really good at, at juggling a lot of different things. I was really good at having a structured schedule, planning ahead. I never pulled an all-nighter in college. I was one of those annoying people. My husband and I are very different. He's a procrastinator. He does everything last minute. And I'm like, if I have to read eight chapters by Friday, I will have two done on Monday, two done on Tuesday, two done on Wednesday. Like that's how I am. It's, it's annoying. I know I get it, uh, but that's just how I am. Right. 
lean into your strengths, like lean into your strengths. What are your strengths? So, so that you can go, Hey, I love that. That's my jam. I like having space to do that. Then maybe a really structured, more drawn out bells and whistle launch is for you. Or are you someone who's like, oh, my best stuff comes right in the moment. And I actually do better under pressure, right? I know a lot of people like that, who they write better under pressure on deadlines. They, I know a lot of writers who are like that, who do better when they are procrastinating, when they do have things last minute. Um, and it's not, it's stressful sometimes, but the, their best work comes from it. And then they have space after to relax. If that's you lean into that. Right. And that is something that I had to realize like, Hey, I am the first one. And I was trying to be more of the second one and that's just not who I am. And that's okay. And, and that I have a lot of friends who are like that. And that's amazing. And I bet, I know I, not, I bet, I know a lot of them say, Meg, I wish I was more like you. I wish I could be like that. Right. But now we're all like, let's just love ourselves for who we are and embrace it and lean into it and optimize it. How can you optimize your strengths instead of trying to just become someone else, right? You have so many amazing strengths. So that's the biggest thing I want you to take. Um, and then also is to look and go, is the problem that I think I'm having actually the problem or is it something else, right? I thought it was launching, right? It wasn't launching. It was the frequency. It was doing it at such an extent almost every month or every other month, but it was more so what was on the other side. It was more so the service that was exhausting me. So that is totally restructured. And I feel amazing with everything I'm doing now. So yeah, this was all over, but I really, I hope this helped you because again, these are like my diaries and this is like selfish, these Friday episodes. Cause I just need to like, talk to you. It's like, we're in therapy. Thank you. You're my therapist. And I really appreciate you. And thank you again to that amazing follower who messaged me that, you know who you are. I really appreciate you because I do feel like, um, we are in it right now and we are on one and <laughs> we have a lot of amazing stuff coming for you. I have an incredible, incredible freebie dropping on Monday. I will definitely have an ad for it in the podcast episode on Monday, but it's for people who are in their first few years of business. Um, five things you need in place to sign your next high ticket client. And it's really incredible. I know it's like, it's a freebie, but man, it's a good freebie. Like as I was writing it, I was like, this is so good. This is like really good. I wish I had this when I got started and it's very applicable. It's going to be like the teaching and then your prompts, what you need to do the work. And then an example, cause I love examples. So it's going to be pretty robust for a freebie, uh, but also not take you a ton of time. It's going to have a PDF workbook as well as a video component to it. So that's coming. So I'm really excited for that. So definitely keep your eyes peeled. I'll mention it in the podcast and I will put it in the show notes on Monday and in the future episodes. Um, but my friends, thank you for being here. I adore you podcast people. I love you so much. This is, uh, again, my favorite place to be. And I just appreciate you for being here and listening. And if you want to take a second to share this, that would mean the world to me. I would thank you profusely if you tag me on Instagram and have a little chat over there. So just tag at Megan Yelaney, share why you love this episode, why you love this podcast, anything you want to share, or if you want to just text it to a friend privately, that's great too. But every, every single share, every single tag, that means so much. It really, really does. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'll see you in the next one.